Okay, here we are. So welcome everybody to our free Zoom with Anna. Anna, how do you say your last name? I don't even know. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alenius. Anna Alenius. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. You're doing and it better than I, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. And so, so Anna's joined us to talk to us about the three-day Conscious Horse, Conscious Rider class that she facilitates. And just a little bit about Anna. Anna is from Sweden, and she has been with horses her whole life. And she's been a professional trainer for over 20 years. She has trained and competed horses up to Grand Prix level dressage and CNC three-star in three-day eventing. So that would be a national, international level too, Anna. Yeah. And, yeah. and you've jumped 1.14 meters, correct? <laughs> Yeah, I've been, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Anna has a strong communion with horses. She creates an alliance that energetically empowers you and invites you to experience more, to be more, and to have more. Um, and Anna has been an, an access certified facilitator since 2009, and she's been a conscious horse, conscious rider facilitator since 2012. So welcome and, and thank you everybody for coming out and joining us today on Easter Sunday. You know, when I chose the date for our next Zoom, I wasn't that, it's so interesting because this morning I'm like, oh, it's Easter Sunday and okay, cool. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. So, um, this is going to be like a favorite in, in uh, repeat because I, we had a call and um, I messed it up, the recording. So, th there was not a recording done or it disappeared in the world somewhere. Um, so, um, I don't know. It feels like I want to go on from where we, you know, where we, where we were last time. But I guess... Um, I'm going to invite everyone to join this little talk for an hour about the class and even people that haven't been in connection with access consciousness before. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to start to talk a little bit about access to just give a little bit of a clue. What, what is access consciousness? So I'm, I wouldn't say I stumble across access consciousness, um, 2009, I was actually in the question for what else is possible. And um, I had tried so many different modalities when it comes to changing my life. I was working as a facilitator of change, um, leadership trainer, coach, and uh, I had done a bunch of different stuff. And I was still like, there must be something more. There must be something more where we actually can access even more about what we know. So that was that big missing piece after years and psychology studies and years of searching. I always been a seeker. And um, then through a friend who actually took an access class maybe a year before me and she went to a seven day in, in Costa Rica. When I saw her and the change that she had received, I was like, I want to have that. I did not, you know, compute or follow what she was talking about it sounded very weird um to be honest but i saw and perceived the energy change in within her so i was like oh i want that and then i was very happy to know as well that gary loves horses the founder of access consciousness and he owns a bunch of horses in united states in, and in costa rica as well and um, that made it even more appealing to me to know what access was all about so basically access consciousness is about accessing your consciousness it's not about giving the right answer it's not about doing being right what is considered from other people's point of view it's and i guess most of us have always tried to fit in and especially in the i mean in the, in the christian world it's crazy with judgment it's crazy with right and wrongs and nobody asked me what i knew about horses you know just imagine being with horses and somebody actually 
ask you to perceive and know and be what you know about horses. So I would say that is actually what this class is about. And Access Consciousness is all about empowering you to know what you know. And um, it's about being in the question. And one part that, and one thing that horses actually is really, really inviting you to, to is to be in the moment and always be in the question. As soon as you are with horses and you go to conclusion that will create what I would say limitation between you and the horse. So I'm gonna, might talk more about that, but that was just an, and we will do, uh, we will use uh, access clearing statements, which, which is a, it sounds like a spell or something, but it's actually a shortage of three pages of, of actually explanation about what it means. But basically we can go to the past and change it. So the f now and the future can, and, and the history can change as well. Um, and you can go and watch that under um, accessclearingstatement.com. The yeah, the clearingstatement.com. I guess maybe Catherine, you can submit it in the email to the people that signed it up. And um, I want to explain as well, if I sound very, very weird, it's because I just, as I told Catherine, I just received like a two and a half hour massage from a Mongolian woman that grew up with horses. And um, she explained to me that they are actually living with horses. They are really living with horses. They actually make beer from the milk of their horses. And during just three months a year, they eat the meat as well, but just during those three months. And uh, so they are really living with them. So that was amazing to actually meet that girl. And she gave me this long, 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 amazing massage just before I'm with you guys. So, and that was very amazing to, to hear her stories about how they live with the herd and with the horses. And they don't, the only way to get transported there, at least when she grew up, is horseback riding. So everybody knows how to ride when you are in Mongolia. Cool and handling horses and being themselves with horses. So I would actually say um, um, that conscious horse, conscious rider is being you with horses as well. And to access more consciousness around horses and around being a rider and um, clear limitations that stops you from accessing everything you know and to have ease with horses and riding as well. And we will as well facilitate horses to get more ease being them and as well being confident, calm, relaxed and on the work, whatever we're asking them of and to be, actually horses are willing to be conscious, but sometimes people have messed it up for them. Usually it's not the horse fault that they behave like they do. Uh, usually it's people that have been ha dealing with them or handling them in a way that they didn't understand or understood. So that is a part we work with as well, conscious horse, conscious rider. And we will as well be able to teach you a bunch of amazing access, uh, hands-on body processes as well. So, sorry for just talking and talking. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I actually just wanted to follow up with a few things, a few of the questions that I had asked in our yep. first Zoom. I was curious so, about that. <laughs> I know. So one of them was regarding um, a, a black Morgan Gelding that I've got in training with me right now. And he was really, had a lot of anxiety with me, not trusting me. And, um, and so now when I go out with him, I just... Um, just to expand out like and, and make sure my energy stays expanded and and ask to be the leader that I truly be and I actually asked him what he would like like I asked him a question cool. and and he has gotten more comfortable with me there's still moments so I don't actually catch him right away I actually wait until he lets me walk up to him and I brush him 
all over with him being free. So he still has the choice right. to leave if he desires. Oh. And, um, and just taking it like that. And so now I brush him all over. And then, then he actually followed me back to the oh, brush. Oh, that's beautiful. And I, like, my body got chills when I saw that he chose that. And I was like, wow. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then I would catch him and put the halter on. And then everything has been more ease and I notice he's also a lot more comfortable just being in with the other horses as well because before he would always be really heads up and like on alert almost but now I notice he's a lot more comfortable and relaxed so how does it get any better than that yes yes and well done I mean it's just two weeks since we talked about it and um, it's a big shift yes congratulation thank you and it's a gift for the horse as well so and um what I love working with horses, if they have anything going on from the past or their story, if we just show them a different, different way to be, they let go of it in a heartbeat. Um, we people tend to hang on more to our stories, um, but horses, they don't have, they're not vested in usually to keeping whatever past was there to still be like, whatever that was going on with the Morgan horse. So yeah. that is the one thing that is really funny too. And uh, yeah, I would say fun and, and um, it's excitement for me to, to be with horses because the change can, it's instant and it's very, it's quick. It's in, sometimes in, instant. And um, sometimes, yes, you need my, maybe to remind yourself about it to not go back to the past because normally we tend to go back to the past, how it used to be. And then we lead the horse back to the past as well. So whatever changed you have already received and you invited him to, and you have done within, within you, um, that is the invitation for him to be different as well. Yeah. Yeah. So everywhere we, we tend to go to the past to find the way of being with the horse um, instead of being with a change that already occurred, can we destroy and uncreate that? Yes. Right, wrong, good and bad, pot, pot, all natural, sports and beyond. So that's the clearing statement. Yeah. And then with the, the mares that I had for sale. Yeah. Um, so we ran some clearings of the projections that I had around them. I maybe yeah. had some conclusions about what it would look like. And then it was just super light one day to, like, it just popped into my mind. Post her ad on Facebook now. Wow. And so I got in the house, I posted her ad up, and I think it was the same day. Um, uh, somebody had commented on it, another trainer that I know in the area, and asked me a question about her. And I was like, yeah, she would be suitable for something like that. And then the lady phoned me like that night and then asked me questions, talked to me about her. <clears throat> yeah. And, um, and they drove down a couple of days later. It was like a six or seven hour drive for them. They came wow. down, rode her. She was amazing. Like it was such a, a match. And, and she's riding her around. And, and it, I thought like it looked like she wanted to ask her to lope or canter. And I'm like, well, I'm like, if you want to lope her, Susan, you just have to sit back and like just softly with your inside leg and, and maybe make a little smooch at her or something. And yeah. And so she did that and they took off, like didn't take off, but the mare started loping for just nicely up the hill, but she was on the, on the incorrect lead. And so I commented after, I'm like, well, that was really good. And maybe it felt a little balanced because she wasn't on the correct lead. And the lady was like, that was only like the second time I loped and it was so awesome. Wow. I know. That's amazing. Like, yeah. So they brought, they took her home that day and, um, yeah like how does it get any better than that so congratulations to that so what we talked about about your mare was we were clearing all the projections uh, expectations that you had on her what she was gonna go and this this selling her or whatever that was and then you actually start to ask her a question and contribute to the sales or did you say that okay um i did did i actually I actually, when I would go out to feed them, I would just look at her and be like, hey, and just say hi and be like, hey, you know, you can choose wherever you desire to live. Like, just show me what to do. Um, tell me if I need to do something to facilitate the sale, I guess. Yeah. 
And then seriously, I think I was in town that day and it was just in my mind, like just post this ad on Facebook again. And so. Cool. Yeah. And she like, found her person. Yes. And she found her person. Cool. Congratulations on that Thank as you. well. So that is awesome. Um, yeah. oh, did you have a question or? Um, there, I see there's a question in the chat right now. Yeah. From Orla. Mm -hmm. When you, when you, at, or actually Orla, would you like to unmute and ask your question or do you want me to read it for you? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Hi, we can, can hear you. you. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, my question is about, so when you're asking questions to a horse or your horse, how do you really get clear on what the response is that's the horse's response? versus what you might think it is or what you might want it to be? How do you really yeah. know what their response is? What's Thank you. That? that was a very, very good question. And um, I would say that first, I always have to clear myself. I have to clear all the projections, expectations. I think I'm muted. Um, oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear yeah. you. Yeah. So you have to start with clearing all the projections, expectations, judgment, conclusions, computations, and separation you might have um, regarding that topic. And everywhere you vested in the outcome as well is what you need to maybe clear as well. So you're not vested in the outcome, whatever the clarity the horse wants to give you so you can, you can actually receive the information. I would say that when it comes to my horse, I talked about him last time, maybe I did. He's 20 years old now, and he's been doing uh, many years of advanced level in dressage, and he's been fine. But suddenly in September, he it was already a leg that has been a little bit tricky, and a hind leg. But I have been treating him with the processes, and I, he's been to the vets a couple of times, but usually he responded more to the alternative like the healing processes we will teach you at the Conscious Horse Conscious Rider. And, um, but I could not, I was so vested now in the outcome to ask him questions because I love this horse so dearly. I have had him for 15, 16 years and uh, we are very, very connected. And uh, I, I could not ask the question what he desired because I could not get the clarity because my head was in the way. And uh, so I had to call my friend. My friend, she's, um, she, she's an access facilitator as well, Teresa Stoa, and she's a, she's a vet and she knows my horse and she's been treating him many times. She's an osteopath, she's awesome as well. And um, I called her and just, please, can you ask some questions here and help me to get some more clarity? And uh, I've been doing that a couple of times now and asked different kind of people that I, that I trust their awareness. And um, the only thing now with my horse is that because he was not so happy anymore to receive the, um, the processes, the healing processes or the, the, uh, that actually facilitate his body to, to change whatever is going on. And um, I... So what I did not want to hear or perceive or know about his message was that he's kind of sort of done with this body he has now. So now I'm just in the process of getting used to that and getting my kids used to that. And his, it doesn't seem like he's in severe, he's not in like severe pain. He's uncomfortable with his body. So the question you asked, I think it's very it's a very, very good question. So what I do when I'm very vested in the outcome because it's my horse and I have too much feelings attached to it, um, I'm actually willing to ask somebody else to get more clarity, to ask my horse or to ask me questions and we can perceive the energy. So what you do is you perceive the energy and um, we all have energy awareness. Horses are energetic beings. We are energetic beings. So it's really about perceiving the energy. And uh, some people function from knowing that the clarity just comes like a flashlight, like very quick and clear. And some people get the information in, in a different way. So we're going to play with that as well about receiving information from a horse. But it's not, 
I would not say it's cognitive. It's 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 on another definitely on another level. It's it's consciousness, and consciousness works in a different way than our mind. Uh, really so the mind is usually in the way like I explained with my horse because I was so vested in the outcome to try to fix him or to change the situation with his legs and um, or his hind leg and uh, I just could perceive that he was not as willing to receive the processes he was like oh you don't have to bother about that let's go and play and go for a walk and just cuddle whatever and usually he can stand for like 20 minutes just receiving, receiving, receiving. And I could perceive that he was not that willing to receive it. Uh, but I'm willing to be in the question still, what else is possible here? And, and does he want to go? And when, do, when does he want to go? But I know that my head is on the ways, in the way. So I'm, I'm happy to ask other people when it comes to that because it's a big decision. So... Um, and how much is he in pain or... So all of that when it comes to my horse right now is too much head for me, too much being vested in the outcome, uh, too much want to have the right answer. And when you want to be right or have the right answer, you're not willing to be really conscious uh, because you're already, you are already in conclusions. So, and Orla, I would say that for me, it's much easier to, to, do this with other people's horses or when it's not like a big decision but i can as well give you another clarity i two years ago i was out gonna buy i was gonna buy um, another horse a youngster and the energy was so light for me i asked so truth do you want to own me because it's actually not we don't own the horse really they own us because we have to feed them pay for them and do all the work with them and the horse was really like, it was really light. And then I asked the truth, if I, if I buy you, what would my life be like in five years? And now I can perceive the energy was heavy. But for that horse, it was a true gift because he was, he had a background of being very, very afraid of people, a bit abused. And he was not confident in any way. And I took him home and he actually had... Um, a severe thing with going on with his leg and um, so I had him for like two months and we tried to change it we extrayed him and it was a, a quite a big thing and maybe it, but I knew that I could be able to reverse the sale like get my money back as well because that he he already had that thing before I bought him and uh, there was evident for that evidence for that on an x-ray so but me having that horse for a couple of months changed his life and his his future as well uh, because then he could go to this family that was not going to put much pressure on him at all but he was very very easy to handle and I I started him up and I rode him for a little just a little bit as much as the leg could take and um, he, he so he's all the whole being he was, was from being a nervous and scatter and anxiety horse to a very confident and very calm and easy to sit on and be with horse. So sometimes it doesn't, so that changed his future. So I realized after my friend asked me again, Teresa, she was like, so were you asking about the horse future rather than your own? And I was like, yeah, obviously. <laughs> so you have to have clarity at that, about that as well. So as well, when you are with a horse, you are very aware being. So if you think that sometimes you feel nervous, it might be you picking up the horse energy as well. So we're going to play with a lot of that, like get more clarity about what is what and what is projection and what is actually whatever is going on within the horse and with you. So did that give you more clarity? Sorry for the long story. <laughs> no, that was actually, that was really great. I'm, I, to be honest, I, I don't know if you know me. I'm actually a, a conscious horse, conscious rider. Yes, person. yes. That's, that's why you feel familiar. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, but um, I haven't done much in, really in terms of giving the workshops yet. I don't feel maybe confident enough yet. But I've been kind of playing with the tools with the horses that I've been riding and stuff like that. And all the stuff that you said, it's so funny. You covered like 
in your talk there, you covered like three different topics that I've been wondering about. One was okay. about choosing a horse that um, I have a couple of horses that I've been asking if they want to own me and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because your story, I think, kind of goes together with one of the horses I was perceiving when I ask if he wants to own me. I think it's quite light, but when I ask if what it's going to be like for me in the future with that horse, I'm not 100% sure it's light. So. Yeah, and I did, I, I get that, because who, which horse wouldn't like to be with you? You're using <laughs> tools, you're willing to be conscious, you're willing to be you with the horse, and you're willing to change. And I know I took this, I talked with Gary about this, and he said the same. So Anna, if you, if you don't get out of the horse he head, almost every horse would, would like to be with you. So you have to be very clear if you're asking for the horse or for your for yourself mm -hmm. so yeah i would say yes be very clear with that so truth is this my future or the horse future right yeah cool that's really cool and then you were talking about um the nervousness and it's so funny because just recently i was with a friend's horse and when we took the horse out into the paddock i was really really nervous like really nervous and I yeah I've been clearing that all the lifetimes that I was killed by a horse or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, so was it yours or was it the horse? That's what I wondered then. And I get that the horse was very nervous too. Yeah. But yeah. I'm unclear. Was it mine and I was projecting it onto the horse or was it the horse and I was perceiving it? So what you can do if you perceive, so the, whatever, for this in seconds, Orla, it feels like that it actually started with the horse. And then if you perceive the horse being nervous and you amplify, I mean, you turn it up inside of you, the horse will pick it up from you. And then you have the circle yeah. of creating more stress. And this is so common when it comes to people and horses. And because we, we don't, we don't even know how aware we are. I mean, just, me going on the competition with my horse it's like an amazing example and i've been competing for many many years and that is a crazy place to be actually on a competition because all the projections and expectations and judgment and uh, that people put on themselves put on the horses put on each other and um, i know that i was riding uh, this was one of the last shows i did with my horse when he was 17 and i was I was perfectly fine. And then suddenly there come, came more riders in the arena and went on the warming up. And all of a sudden, my whole body went into total contraction. I was like, what the fuck? Sorry for the language. Why am, what is going on? And then, thanks God, I remember the, the tools to just ask who does this belong to and return to sender. And the thing is, the moment I went into that contraction, my horse, because of course, they are so aware and he knows me. So when I go into this weird contracted energy, of course he's doing the same in the one split second. And then I get stressed about he's being stressed. So that definitely for all you show people, we, you will get lots of tools or just being with horses from just this three day of a class as well. And, um, so I did a lot of clearings about that. I did, we did change the whole energy within the uh, warming up arena. And I, I could like, you know, perceive that, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm me again now. And then my horse changed again. So that is, um, that is just being as well. That what I love with being with horses as well. They always put you into question and question always open up for more. So thank you, Ola, for having all these questions in your head so I could pick them up and tell them <laughs> this because I was like, what, what am I actually talking about? <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you so much. That was so helpful. Thank you. Oh, That's thank great. you. That's awesome. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Aaron, Kristen, Danielle? And just know there's no stupid questions, just stupid people not asking questions. So you're free to talk about whatever. And I can see if I can ask you more questions and see what clarity we can get about it. 
Um, so during your three days, while you're thinking, if you want to pop in and ask questions, please, please feel free doing that. Uh, but during these days, we will cover the amazing manual that Gary has uh, that comes to Conscious Horse, Conscious Rider or with the class. And um, uh, we will talking about being with horses, handling horses. I hope we will have a bunch of different horses that we can play with and you can get information about um, and we will ask questions about and you, I can see what I can contribute to you with my years and years of experience handling different kinds of horses and, um, and we will explore what you already know about horses because so many times people, they don't even know what they know. And I'm so curious about what you, you all of you guys that, is, that will be in the class, what you know about horses and what you know about horses that you haven't acknowledged. So that's my target to get people to actually acknowledge what they know and start to be in the question when they are with horses and the horses will start to dance with you. It's, it's really, that's the way to start to create a communion with the horse. And that's my target always. Um, that's probably why competitions were, um, especially in the end when I was competing now, um, I need, to, I just know I have to do it in a different way. Um, when I tried to do it the way usually other people do it, it did not, it was not fun for me. And, and if it's not fun for me, it's not fun for the horse and um, so on. And um, some people, some horses, sorry, they love to be in shows. My horses love, my horse loved to be in a show when I loved it. But when I went into performance mode that I had to do whatever, what do you call it? Anxiety, um, performance anxiety. Then he was like, this is not fun. I could perceive the contraction within me and in him. And it was just, I'd rather go home. So um, we will definitely cover different areas. And it does not matter if you have not ever been on a horse or if you are a professional um, rider so you, we will have tools and processes to change anything and everything for you and we will cover that we will cover the body processes really yummy amazing body processes when we uh, work on the horses and um, we where we can when we facilitate horses to get more ease with the body and we actually have the extra day for me is to cover money as money i can um, that you will explore what you know about riding too. So we actually have an extra day to, to actually get you on the horse and play with that. Cool. Yeah. I Anyone? Maybe, yeah. I thought maybe somebody was going to ask a question. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> yes. Because the conscious horse, conscious rider is typically a two-day class so the three-day that we're doing is allows time for riding more riding and and finding out more about what we know because nobody ever asks you what you know about horses um yeah which is so cool so cool yeah yeah, so I'm really happy to be able to have this as a three-day class um, when I come to you, Catherine. And um, we will have plenty of time for everyone to play with everything around horses and riding and uh, everything and anything, whatever, will show up. And usually the horses are contributing immensely uh, because they will show us where to go as well with their behavior or whatever comes up. So, yeah. Anyone well, have, else? Do you have a question, Catherine? I have a question. Cool. So, so in the two weeks since our last Zoom, yes. <laughs> I had a fellow contact me about his horse. And, um, and he really likes him. He likes riding his horse. His horse's name is Rusty. He's like an eight-year-old Appaloosa gelding. And he's actually at my place right now with me. And so when... When this fellow and Rusty would go out riding, um, they like to chase cows and such. And if they were going through some trees, and, and the, the fellow figures that it's when something would catch him on his back leg or up in his flank, he would just start bucking, like buck, buck, buck. And then the fellow would end up getting bucked off. 
Um, so, so he want he wants me to see if we can change that because he yeah. does desire to keep his horse. Um, so, so I've worked with Rusty a little bit, and he really, I really like him actually, and he's really a sweet horse and a kind horse. There was a few things, um, some groundwork stuff that we went over. And so, so what is the bucking? Like, what, what questions should I ask him? So what do you know about the bucking? So what is your awareness about the bucking? Um, well, is it like a moment with the horse? Like something comes up and he just kind of changes and he just reacts to that. And then it goes back to like something like that or is was it an, another question that you can ask that is more like um so truth is it okay number one is he get does he get frightened yeah that feels really light okay so truth um is it from this lifetime or previous lifetimes Previous lifetimes. Yeah, that is actually, so yeah, that is lighter. So you can go in and clear whatever happened with him to him. And, um, and um, have you tried to work him from the ground and touch his legs? I actually have. Yeah. And, and he actually doesn't mind it. But I wonder if it's because we're in an open space. Like, because in the trees maybe there's that claustrophobic feeling um where he kind of like but when we're out in the open i mean i put him over trot poles and like i raised them so he's so he tripped over them a little bit and he actually didn't mind and, and okay I had can that, i ask you can i ask you another yeah. question yes is this behavior more connected to the owner and and the horse Yes, with them together. Yes. Yeah. So maybe they were exposed to something together in a previous lifetime. Yes. And maybe the horse goes into a little bit of fright and then the man amps it up and then we have this vicious circle. Yes. So I would actually work with him as well. Okay. Would so he he's willing? not, I don't know how willing... I guess I, I need to ask questions about what he can receive and what yeah. he can hear. Because you, um, don't have, you don't have to loudly talk about previous lifetimes no. with him. But in my mind, I, while I'm talking to him, I can kind of clear all of the, it would be like oaths and vows, right? Um, that the um, can have or what? No, I would go into clear all the previous, whatever that lifetime was. Okay. That, so truth, did something bad happen to them? in a previous lifetime yeah it's like they were killed in a war yes. or something like that yes yes <gasps> so clear that yeah yep. and uh, you can go whatever you can go with him if he's not willing to receive the clearest made statement yeah. you can ask so whatever that has created in your world that you expect him to buck you off every time th something yeah. touches his legs because the horses will do whatever we have in our mind right Mm -hmm. So you have, and then you can just, so truth, are you willing to just destroy and uncreate all of that? Mm -hmm. And he might say yes, and you can do the clearing statement. You know, yeah. you can just do it in your head if you don't want to do it loud. Yeah. And um, who knows, sometimes people are more willing to receive and you can start play with it and then you will probably see what he's willing to receive. So. Yeah, and in this moment, I'm actually aware that if I... And telling the fellow that I'm riding his horse, like that maybe I need to tell him that I worked through, worked through some stuff yeah, with him. Yeah. And I've taken him through the bushes and he's been great now and he's totally over it. And then I could ask him, okay, so every time you're riding him, like kind of what you said, like every time you ha you're worried about him bucking you off, will you just, just let it go? like yeah you know yeah. and and go beyond that and then run the clearing statement in, out loud if he's willing or in my mind oh my god Anna this is so exciting and I'm so aware that Rusty is so excited about this like yes maybe he wants his rider to be more conscious as well yeah and maybe he's asking maybe he so what if horses actually create their they create everything as well that's what I'm looking at I've actually been asking my horse so true 
did you create this with your leg? Truth did my horse. Okay, I'm okay, asking I'm you. Sure. I'm asking you for you guys for help now. So, truth did my horse create that with his leg? Yes or no? Yeah, I get that he chose that. Yeah. And he shows colic when I came home from my last, from the Costa Rica seven day and he almost died. And I had to stay with him for three nights in this. I lived in the stable for three nights and he was very happy for that. So what if we could acknowledge that they are potent conscious creator as well? They, they, don't, they don't use their mind like we do. They, they have a quite small brain, but they're very conscious and they're very willing to be conscious. And we know consciousness is not from your little brain or from your big brain. It's something else. Yeah. So that was awesome. So what else is possible? That Rusty, and it feels like I can really perceive, um, he's um, uh, just your energy when you talk about the horse. He's a very cool horse. He is, yeah. And he's probably very conscious and very sensitive and very aware of whatever goes on with the rider. And then whatever if he keeps on having that in his head oh my god he will buck me off then the horse go okay i will buck you off <laughs> yeah yeah oops sorry for dropping you <laughs> that's okay <laughs> um okay i'm gonna turn you around that's it oh we have some questions do we um uh, that was not. orla's question in the chat is there ah. Anything else? So I guess I'll just talk about the class for a few minutes. So, yeah. so Anna is coming uh, June 16th, 17th and 18th um, to my farm, to our farm, just near St. Walberg, Saskatchewan. And the closest airports to fly into, if you're not from the area, would be Edmonton, Alberta, and Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And so they're both international airports and um and if you want are making travel arrangements contact me um i will put my email up somehow because we can kind of plan for travel from the airport because it is about probably a three hour drive um but if you're in the area and you desire to bring your horse that can be arranged and again just contact me and we can make those arrangements and it's going to be three days of the horses and the people that show up. Um, the horses and the people that show up will also create the class. I mean, we follow the manual, but, but the class gets created by what shows up. And the yeah, I would actually say that we will go through the manual, but we will follow the energy. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I have an indoor arena that we can work in. So whether... <laughs> Weather is not a factor, and if it's beautiful outside, there's some beautiful areas that we can either go riding to or play as well. So, lovely. My invitation to anybody who would like to Thank you. join us. An accommodation and um, um, accommodation and uh, oh, yes. Yes, like um, there's like hotel the rooms in St. Walberg in the town. The town is only five minutes from our farm. Oh, perfect. Um, and there's two really nice hotels there in town and uh, that are probably pretty reasonably priced. And um, oh. yeah. Awesome. So that's easy then. Yes. Yeah, cool. There it's was not, a question. There's yeah, another question now. Orla said something, I think. From Orla. Did Orla text something? um chat uh so i i get horses can create certain people coming to them to get their owner they want oh that was her was that your from before no i actually just put that because you were just talking about how horse, your horse created the leg thing um, yeah so I was wondering, like, how, how much can they create? Can they create, I get a yes that they can create, like, getting an owner that they want. Yes. And what kind of things will they do to get that if they have a previous owner? Like, if they have someone else and they want to change, what kind of things do they tend to do? Or how they, they can do what, they can actually do lots of things. <laughs> um, um, I mean... Uh, for me, with my horse, I mean, the question, so is he, is he like done? Because I did, he was becoming a pensioner and I was just fooling around, you know, hacking out and 
walking in the forest with him the last, I would say, two years. And um, I don't know if that really works for him. So if that, if he's really in the long term and enjoy, was enjoying that. Um, and if we talk, your question was how, what they can create to, to make another owner. Um, um, let me give you an example and see if that feels light from my own horse experience. I, I, I went with a, a student of my riding student, a pupil, what you call them, uh, to find a horse for her. And she found this beautiful chestnut mare, liver chestnut with four white long socks and a blaze. And she was just stunning. And she moved very, very well. But then when we got there, the owner said that she's not, definitely not a beginner's horse. She's been throwing people off and she's been really, she's even, she was evil to everyone. She was evil to people. She was evil to um, sheep. They had sheep in her, in her little field and she was with a little pony for a while, but she was, she wanted to kill everything and everyone. And I, but I was like, okay, so I can sit on an, an I will, I can try her for, for my, my student, my pupil, but she said immediately that was not, is not for me. But the thing is, simultaneously, uh, my now one of my best friends, she saw that I did not know her by then. She lives five hours from where I live. She saw that advert on that horse. And she was like, oh my God, that's, a, that's the dream of my life, that horse. I just want that horse. And, uh, but she's not a very, she's not as, I would say, trained or skilled rider, whatever, than me. And she's, she's definitely not a very brave rider. So um, she actually called the owner of that horse. She, let's call her Poppy. I called her Poppy, like a little doll. In, she was from Holland. And um, she, so I, okay, so let's make this story a little bit shorter then. I got that horse, had her for three years, changed everything, changed her behavior. She, be, she almost, in the beginning, she tried to kick me in my head. She tried to kick my son. He was two years old. Um, she was biting the cats. She was mean to the other horses. And she was just horrible in with the way she, she behaved. So I worked with her for a couple of months. And then I started to train her. I mean, started up to ride her. And it actually, she was actually a horse that was talented for everything. She was seven years. She was almost not ridden at all when I bought her. And I got her really cheap. So I could not say no because I was like, I just, that horse is obviously just coming home with me. It was weird. It was almost like she made that demand. So I took her home. I had her for three years. I changed her to being a top trained dressage horse where she could do all the flying changes every second stride. She did the PF and passage and everything. And then just like, Literally a week after I bought the horse, I became, I met that girl and I showed her a picture. Look what I got. This is the horse I just bought. We were talking about horses and cats because she had horses and she was breeding my coon cats that I've been doing as well. And then she was like, oh my God, that is my horse. That's, that's the dream of my horse. And I'm going to own her one day. And uh, the thing is, after I had her for three years, I decided to sell her. And uh, I told my friend, I'm going to sell her. And she was like, I want to buy her. And I was like, are you sure? Because she's still a little bit wild. And, but she was like, yeah, but my daughter, can, she can handle her. She's big enough now. Because her daughter was 19 by then and, and a quite good rider and show jumper and matured in her riding. But when she was 16, when I got the horse, that was no deal. That would, not, that would not have worked out. So it feels like I bought that horse so she later on could be with my friends and her daughter and she loves her life there she's she's amazing there so yes i do think she created that as well so what do you know or what do you know about it orla well i i was sort of asking because there's a horse that i've been riding a couple of times a week she's a show jumping mare yeah and i adore her and i've asked if she wants to own me i'm i'm not impartial in this i know <laughs> um, and i i kind of get a yes and i know that her current owner 
has had trouble with her. She used to be his favorite horse and she's not anymore because she threw him off at a competition. Yeah. And I think that was sort of around the same time I started riding at that place or maybe a little bit before. Okay, cool. And, and she has like a sort of a reputation of not being an easy horse. And I'm not like a, I'm not like a great rider. I think I'm just average, but I've never had any trouble with her. And I totally feel taken care of her when I'm riding her. And I don't feel like any trouble riding her at all. Cool. So, so can I ask you a question, Ola? Yeah. So you, so truth, does she want to own you? Yes. And if you would buy her, what would your life be like in five years? That's the problem. She's way out of my means financially. <laughs> okay, so pock and pot everything that is. Then you need to ask her for some support. Yeah, I've been doing that. I've been asking what can she contribute to this. Habit. Okay, so if you go, if, so all the conclusion that she's not in your financial reality, can we destroy and uncreate that? Yes. Right, wrong, good and bad. Oh my God, was a little bit of charge there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh holy moly okay Ola. <laughs> so all the DECC's decisions judgment conclusions computations you have about that about the money you that you can't buy her that you can't get that money and she would be so expensive and you will never be able to to make that happen can we destroy and uncreate that god zillions god zillions of times yes Right, wrong, good and bad, pot, pot, and shows, boys, beyond. So, yes, it feels very light that she wants to be with you. And um, uh, ask her to contribute then. Tell her that, make this happen. I need your support in this. Um, so, do you know the price that he has put on? Yeah, she's worth about $40,000. Okay, she's worth about that? Well, that's what he bought her for. When he bought yeah. Her. But is, is that the price tag on her now? I haven't asked him directly. I'm too scared. <laughs> that's what I've been told by the people in the writing center, that that's the price he got for her. Okay. So, but he's not happy with the horse. So... Not so much anymore. She used to be his favorite and not anymore. Cool. So what else is possible here and what if you is it is it about you have to own her or can you just enjoy her i can do that too i can just go and get to ride her a few times a week and what if you how many times a week would you love to ride her i would love to ride her three or four times a week okay cool can you create that can you make that happen yeah i can do that cool so what the everything is the opposite what it appears to be and nothing is opposite what it appears to be and everything is opposite what it appears to be and, and nothing is opposite what it appears to be so what if you can have her for free so what if you can have her as your horse you mean by going to ride her a few times a week without buying yeah her? i mean yes what else is possible when it comes to what what about asking some more questions about it yeah yeah, yeah, and I've been wondering about that. And what would it take for you to create that money, whatever that the price tag would be as well with ease. But in the meantime, so being the question, so everything changes all the time as well. Mm -hmm. So what contribution can she, is she already to you? And what can you more receive from her? And what contribution are you already for her, for just being you? And it's not about being a skilled writer. It's, it's about you being you. Yeah. Yeah, I really get that because I've seen it with the horses. Because she doesn't seem to take advantage that you're not, that's, like you said, that you're an average rider. She does not misuse that. No, with no. my horse that I had, she would like fuck people over definitely if they were not. She would know if she could throw them off and she would do it. But uh, by then, but then she changed and now she's she's really cool. So what else is possible here so it's what if it's not about that what if it's about the chemistry and the energy in between you and what contribution you are for her and ask her to teach you to ride i'm asking my horses my horse was the best teacher for me to get a, to become a better rider meanwhile i was educating him bringing up him as being a, a not ridden almost at all and to being an advanced dressage horse but it, we have so he's been my teacher and I've been his teacher 
And that's the beauty of being with horses. It's not about, nobody sits with the answer. It's really a dance. Yeah, yeah I've cool. been asking that a lot of her actually, for her to teach me how to ride her better each time. Cool. Yeah, it's really cool. And I have to say, I feel like 100% connected when I'm riding her. I feel like 100% there with her connected. Yeah. And I think that's that's what she loves about you, that you're actually present with her. Light or heavy? Light, yeah. Yeah, cool. So that is the gift we can be for the horses as well. And that's the gift horses can be for us, to be actually be present, not be all in our talking mind, the minds that keep on talking and talking and, you know, disconnecting us from our being present with our bodies and present with everything around us. Cool. So is there any more questions? Thank you, Ola. Thank you. And good luck. And what else is possible with that mare and horses? Thank you, Anna. Thank you. And I really would love to see you put some horse classes up now, some conscious horse conscious rider classes up. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I will be doing that. I will. Awesome. <laughs> Last call for questions. Yes. Cool. So I would like to invite all of you to just come and play with us and Catherine at her beautiful farm and the horses. And um, um, there's, this is classes for everyone who is, who is interested in horses, who loves horses, who are afraid of horses who are professional it does not matter because you will get the tools to know what you know more about horses and what you know about riding that you haven't even acknowledged and of course i will be able to give you tips and um, some information of what i know about horses and you can take with you whatever feels light and fun for you and works for you yeah so anyone and else Cool. If this class is calling you, ask your horse, horse, what's it going to take to get us to this class? Bring yeah. the money in or, yeah. you know, how else can it show up? Um, we are only like two May. Oh my God. Like two months away. It's April 16th. I know. Today. Two months away to class. Wow. And, um, if you, and if you choose to come and play with us, what would your life be like in five years? Yes. I mean, the tools from this class can change your whole life. You can change your whole life in three days. You can take the tools and apply it that you learn from your horse and from this class yeah. to yeah. your business, to your relationships, to every and, area. Yeah. And if you're coming without a horse, that's, that's fabulous because I have horses here for everybody to play with. Um, so yeah that's beautiful and if you're a writing teacher or a writing trainer uh you will get lots of information about how you can you know move, move through limitations within the rider and with the horse and yeah lots of lots of playful tools so. all right well i will get the recording uploaded <laughs> thank you thank you for hosting yes and um yeah, I guess. I just want to say thank you very much to both of you. That was really, really cool. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And I so much would love to have you all there and hope to see you soon, everyone. Cool. All right. Well, happy Easter. Happy. Have an awesome day. And um, I think everybody knows us on Facebook. So if you have any questions, um, message me or Anna and I'll get the recording sent out to your email and um, yeah. Excellent. You Thank soon. you for that. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank Bye you. guys. Bye.